What's going on, Louise here? Today's tutorial is the HM3130 QA mesh creation, and we'll learn how to create and optimize a mesh based on some quality criteria. So let's get right to it. We're going to be using the model planer dot hm for this tutorial we'll use the quality index panel to set the element quality indexes for the optimization of the mesh setting reasonable values for them is usually very helpful for improving local problems in the mesh so go ahead to the 2d page quality index panel on the right side of the panel the value for the comp qi which is an overall quality index reads 85.09. Keep this number in mind as we'll be making modifications on the mesh to reduce it. We'll start with the cleanup tools we and we see that the mesh changes color and the bed elements are shown in yellow and red. So let's try to modify the hole and washers too as the elements around the hole seem to be the worst ones. The radio option lets us change the diameter of the hole by clicking on a node on its edge and dragging inwards or outwards. So we could use that if the hole's diameter is not of crucial importance for our analysis. If we check the edit box, we can set a value for the radius and then just click on the edge to update it. The angular option lets us move the nodes around the edge without changing the radius. Again, we could use the edit box to set a value for the relative angle of a node on an edge. The radio and angular option lets us sim simultaneously change the hole's diameter and node orientation. And the circumferential option lets us rotate the nodes around the edge. The link washers option changes the position of the nodes as well as drag and scale a washer, but we don't have it here. The remash number of layers option lets us specify a value for the number of washer layers to be remashed after altering the position of a node. Now let's try the place node too. We can change a node's location and check out in real time how the elements and the comp QI change. We can allow the movement of the boundary if we want and move along the surface or normal to the surface. The move mid notes option is useful when we have second order elements which have a mid node between nodes. The swap edge tool can be used to change edges on elements. When we click on an edge, the status bar will display a message if the swap won't improve the mesh and that we have to click on it again if we want to force the swap anyway. In here, as we can see, swapping any of these edges wouldn't do any good. The node optimize tool is made to automatically move a node to the position that will optimize the quality of its surrounding elements. The options along surface and normal to surface are available again. As we click on the nodes, we can see that the QI mesh is being reduced. Again, we'll click QI and do until we get to the original mesh. And the element optimized to automatically optimizes the shape of the element and its surrounding elements to maximize their quality. We can reduce the QI again using this tool. All of these are kind of manual ways to improve the mesh quality, just in case we want to make subtle changes. Next, we'll use a more automatic method. Let's first redo the original mesh just click on QI undo until the option is no longer available. And the method we'll use is the QI optimizations movement. So go to the smooth panel, plates, sub panel, select the displayed elements, and switch the mesh algorithm to QI optimization. Here we have some options to set. The target quality index is the value HyperMesh will try to achieve for the QI, but it's not guaranteed. We could set a time limit for the operation, which would be useful if we had a large model and wanted to limit the amount of time spent. The feature angle is the angle between the normals of two adjacent elements, and HyperMesh will restrict the movement of the nodes for the elements involved 
to keep the feature angle below this value. The single optimization step option allows one pass to generate the smoothing, while the recursive optimization procedure allows more than one pass, which may take a little more time. So we'll go with these options and just click smooth and the status bar displays the approximate QI reached was 0.11, which is way lower than our initial 89. So this mesh is much better. Alternatively, we could use the QI settings in the auto mesh panel. Go back to it and batch mesh slash QI optimize sub panel. Select all serfs, set the element size to 18, and mesh type to quads. This panel also offers several controls. The smooth across common edges function moves the nodes generated on an edge off from it after smoothing. The keep connectivity option creates a new mesh with the nodes sitting at the edges of an adjacent existing mesh which might happen if you are meshing one surface after another. The redo connectivity redoes the mesh on adjacent edges of an existing mesh to ensure that the new mesh matches along the shared edge. And the break connectivity lets the masher work free without regarding the surrounding mesh. In this case, it won't make much of a difference and we'll go with the keep connectivity for this and click mesh. At last, we go back to the QI panel to check the value and it's 0.12, so this too is much better than the initial. So this was it for this video. I hope you have learned how to deal with some of the features of the QI panel. And if you liked it, leave your thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.